know if you can hear the rain. No? Wow. Let's see if I can turn the camera around. You can see the rain. It's a torrential downpour, but we are hunkered down in the horse shelter. And I have to tell you, this horse shelter feels like when you all join me here, even more so, feels like the holiest place to be. I just feel so at home here with you all. Please feel at home, beloved, here and now. In a sense, it's our, it's our homecoming <laughs> when we gather. Our homecoming with all of nature. As nature. Without any separation. Oh, so we interbreathe now breath by breath. Welcome. Beloved Kami, so good to have you here. And as people join, I will let them in, but let's officially begin. We're breathing together with all of nature. What better way and what more powerful way could we begin? And in each moment we begin again. Welcome Annette, the Sierra. It is so good to have you here with us. Feels like a homecoming. So make yourself at home, please. Whether it's your first time here at our gathering or not, it's all of our first time here and now. You know, I always try to, <laughs> I love the coming home. Yeah, me too, Sherry. The feeling of home, <laughs> it's the best. Before our gathering, especially the first of the month, I tried to have some clarity of how to explain what this is you know but in a sense it doesn't have to be explained because it has a felt sense to it that draws some people in and it has a felt sense to it that doesn't need to be named But I, there is one felt sense to it that I would like to just try to lend words to because that's, that is how we humans communicate. One of the ways, right, is through words and what will be shared today will be frequencies from nature that's translated into words. They're transmissions that we are all um, tapping into and even co-creating. One of the words that I really love is um, a word that um, 
Basira, you and I were on retreat together yesterday with the word contemplation. And I love the, the root of that being the temple, in the temple, contemplate. And the temple right now is this moment. And we all are meeting here at the threshold of the temple to allow a conversation, a very subtle call and response song to be sung through us all. And there's so many ways that we sing this is one of the ways we come together. We invite in all of nature to be nearer than near. So near that we cannot differentiate our very heart from the heart of nature. May I say something? Oh, please. Well, yesterday was such a magnificent gathering. And the thing that um, was so amazing is that before you took us on a journey with the horses, you did um, a practice that was so grounding help to bring us to so much presence that we could create the space for the temple. Wow. Hallelujah. That means that I myself have evolved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said to a friend, um, I have a friend, I sent her to the link and she wants to come uh, this morning. She's, um, um, very curious and, and she's a fellow Marie. Mm, wonderful. Well, you know, the reason Love that we can celebrate that we can celebrate our evolution is that when we witness our own evolution, we know that the drop contains the whole sea. So when I say hallelujah, I have evolved, I am evolving. It means the one heart of all of us is evolving because it couldn't happen in any one without it happening in the whole and basira thank you for for opening us with something that is really important today and that is the groundedness right if someone, and, if someone came in without getting grounded first and watched you, they might have to make too big a leap. And you're saying that for a reason, I have to tell you, because I have trepidation over the transmissions for today. So you're being guided right now in such a perfect way. You're directly speaking as one co-creative field. And I really, really appreciate that. So we're going to heed, heed those words, those word vehicles that just flowed through you. And yesterday I, I was, you know, facilitating or co-facilitating a retreat on contemplation. It was a mystical retreat, Sufi retreat. But today, is one complete flow of contemplation as an ever expanding, evolving heart that we all share with nature. And that's why we're here. And yes, we have to ground. What does that mean? It means to go so deep into our root system that 
the soil, the heart of Mother Gaia meets the heart of the whole universe. I'm just lending words to a felt sense of this depth of grounding. It has to go so deep that the solid anchor of groundedness is grounded in the strength of its porosity, its porousness to light. has to go so deep that the soil converges with our soul. And those words are meant to transmit the felt sense of remembrance, as we all know this way of circuitry. So let's call in all of nature now to assist. So we can lean in, re-rhythmatize. And, and train to the hum of our essence, which is in complete harmonic convergence with the hum of all of nature. So I begin with the herd of light, just calling them in with their names. So honoring Travis Alazim, who is here behind me. Yoshi, Teddy, Hazneem, Halil. And Omar, an unseen whole star beam. And they are named the herd of light again, not as a box or a label or as a separation from any of nature or from you, but as a word vehicle of remembrance. So now call in your herd, the herd of light that encircles you. In silence, we hear you. We hear them all being called in, these beings that are disguised as nature forms in all their glory, or those that have dissolved from their forms. Sometimes the dissolution of the form allows that formlessness, that presence to be felt completely without distortion without confusion, the confusion by the complexity of its form. All in all of those animal beings that burst your heart open into deeper love for yourself, which overflows as love to all. We call in Mother Gaia herself to teach us, remind us, and allow us to unlearn separation. to awaken the magic of 
being recreated again and again by love. You call in her elements, earth, air, fire, water. We call in the ether. We're all elements dance as one. We call in the rocks <clears throat> and the mountains the minerals. We call in the trees, the flowers. The seeds, the soil, the microbiome, and fungi. We call in the oceanic beings, the safari beings, the Arctic beings. Rainforest beings, the desert dwellers, the land beings, the farm beings, wild and domesticated beings, all wild in spirit. And call in the insect realms and all the winged ones. We call in our, our human animal family. We call in space itself, the sun, the snow moon, all the planets, and just calling in those beings that have crossed the path of your consciousness of late. Recently, those beings that have shown up, just bring them in. They are already here. And then feel into the integrity of this web of interbreathing light. And really lean in. Feel yourself integral. Your part in the whole and the whole in the center of your part. and ground so deeply that soul meets soil and that the whole cosmos meets the core of the earth. As above, so below, so deep and so high that there's no differentiation between high and low in this loop of infinity. And breathe in, breathe in the amplification that we have woven here in our circle and breathe it out 
through the hole. Deep breath and feeling our breath become coherent and our heartbeat in tune with the heartbeat of the earth. and in tune with the heartbeat of the stars. And we are going to begin our contemplation in this temple, this temple of here and now. As I open to our gathering, I try to empty out the predominance of my own thoughts. And it's so much easier, you may have noticed, to do so with a little help from nature friends. And it's really easy to do in the presence of this herd. And then I tune to the collective of what wants to come through from the heart of nature. And, and this is what flowed through today. And it is really um, just wanting to highlight that these are, they're not concepts or beliefs or anything that your mind needs to understand. Just as like your mind doesn't have to understand taking a bath in essential oils. <laughs> so just allow the mind to breathe. Of course, our minds are welcome and the nature of the mind is open anyway. But we're listening and receiving and taking in and letting go through all kinds of pathways together. Limitless creative pathways. So let your, the soles of your feet be at play here. And let the palms of your hands receive and let go and at the back of your head be an open portal for things to move and rearrange and whatever subtle center or physical felt sense speaks to you as you take this bath these are all things to tune to and to tune to more than we tune to our for a change. So let's all just bathe together now in these transmissions. And they came through with a focus on the theme of viewpoint from the heart of nature consciousness. Viewpoints are like paints on the canvas of life. It is time to review what palette you are creating from. Viewpoints are like paints on the canvas of life. It is time to review what palette you are creating from. Viewpoints are not solid, yet, oh, how tightly you cling to them as if they are. To 
just notice here and now how clinging is simply a movement of fear, the fear of losing something. When we ask most human animals, if you are afraid to loosen your grip on your points of view, that you blanket upon life, most of you are not even able to differentiate between the feeling of loss of self and the loosening of tightly held points of view. When we ask most humans, if you are afraid to loosen your grips on the points of you, you blanket upon life, most will not even be able to differentiate between the feeling of loss of self and the loosening of the tightly held points of you. I'm going to just take a breath as we welcome a new friend into the space. And I would like to read these word vehicles again, a new viewpoints are not solid. Yet, oh, how tightly you cling to them as if they are. Just notice how clinging is a movement of fear, the fear of losing something. When we ask most human animals, if you are afraid to loosen your grips on your points of view, that you blanket upon life, most will not even be able to differentiate between the feeling of loss of self and the loosening of tightly held points of view. What we are saying is, so many of you think who you are is your point of view. And you think that's who others are too. Viewpoints are not solid, nor is the appearance realm of what they create. Viewpoints are not solid, nor is the appearance realm of what they create. Clinging to points of view is a way of reinforcing solidity over uncontrollable malleability. A way of feigning solidity. No, Yoshi, Yoshi. Stepped up with such purple. It's hard to stop. Welcome. Hmm. No, she's the one who started these patterns. She has. A lot of purpose. So we continue breathing, bathing. Viewpoints are not solid. Yet, oh, how tightly you cling to them as if they are. Just notice how 
Clinging is a movement of fear, the fear of losing something. So many of you think who you are is your point of view. Viewpoints are not solid, nor is the appearance realm of what they create. And clinging to points of view is a way of reinforcing solidity over uncontrollable malleability. A way of feigning solidity. Feigning permanence. And feigning permanence is merely a fear-based game played in the sandbox of life. You are simply covering impermanence with blankets woven from threads of recycled viewpoints. You are all such magical weavers. Clinging to viewpoints is a way of reinforcing solidity over uncontrollable malleability. A way of feigning solidity of feigning permanence. And feigning permanence is merely a fear-based game played in the sandbox of life. You're simply covering impermanence with blankets woven from threads of recycled viewpoints. And you are all such magical weavers. The loom the loom of impermanence is your greatest asset. The loom of impermanence is your greatest asset. It is made of nothing solid and its potentiality is endless. This loom of life is changeless, yet all it creates changes. The loom of impermanence is your greatest asset. It is made of nothing solid. And its potentiality is endless. This loom of life is changeless, yet all it creates changes. Now it is time to review the viewpoint threads that you are weaving with. To review if you unconsciously cling to your view as who you are. To review if you cling to your viewpoints to try to feel solidness in the perpetually shifting sands beneath your feet. Here and now with all of nature, we review. Review if we are unconsciously clinging to our view as who I am. To review if we cling to our viewpoints to try to feel solidness in the perpetually shifting sands beneath our feet. But these viewpoints are not anchors. The ground of being is your anchor.
the ground of being is your anchor. Let us all now shift into the felt sense of that. <clears throat> The first part of this transmission had a felt sense as well. Notice that. And then just as those words, those word vehicles, the ground of being is our anchor, came through. Just feel that. going to show you the sky right now. After the torrential rains, this magnificent sun. What is so amazing? Well, it all is. The herd is just riveted, glued in here in the sacred horse shelter, holding the space with us that we can bathe in amplified grace. The ground of being is your anchor. It is groundless. So it may take some getting used to as a felt sense. Like being a vessel on choppy waves and then finding your sea legs on land, except in reverse. The ground of being is your anchor. It is groundless. So it may take some getting used to as a felt sense, like being a vessel on choppy waves and then finding your sea legs on land, except in reverse. The groundless ground of being is everywhere and it is where what is viewed and the viewer converge here and now. The groundless ground of being is everywhere. And it is where what is viewed and the viewer converge here and now. The world of co-creative appearances is as solid as a dream. And your viewpoint creates the dream. Loosening your hold upon your viewpoint and untying it from the clinging grip of identity expands the dream out of dreamland and into the land of awakening. The world of co-creative appearances is as solid as a dream And your viewpoint creates the dream.
loosening your hold upon your viewpoint and untying it from the clinging grip of identity expands the dream out of dreamland and into the land of awakening here and now with all of nature as nature. Let's breathe together in silence for a moment. I'm going to ask you to hold the attunement of the anchor inside of yourself in the groundless ground of beingness. While I just for an animal being that you can interbreathe with really intimately joining breath with understanding that breath is not limited to physical distance or time but that this breath is a spirit breath A spirit to spirit breath, which flows into a an integrity of unity, unity spirit. And as you breathe with this nature being, just feel. Feel their point of view flowing through you. Feel it. Begin to dance with your own essence. There's a meeting place where it is being viewed and viewpoint. And the viewer, they all converge into here and now a field of vastness and then beginning to expand this breath with all of nature Coming one breath. And including human beings as nature in this breath. And breathing in the nourishment of this way of breathing. And breathing out this nourishment for all beings.
and then we will gently begin to shift our attention from this inner breath circulation with all beings, with the ground of being, and begin to bridge it with opening our eyes. Begin to bridge it with feeling your physicality here as a dance. And that can include a dialogue if you feel inspired to speak, though speaking is not required or necessary. Because as you can hear, our silence is very audible. But do feel free to speak because words can form right from the heart of silence too. So just unmute yourself. I will be happy to edit out anything and not share the dialogue at your request. It's for us here and now, unless you feel to have it be shared wider. So you can just be free. And I would love to hear anything you feel to share that may have arisen from, been catalyzed by our shared space. We want to thank this incredible wise being. Yeah. He has taught me so much about grounding into the groundless ground of being. That is everywhere. I never mind sharing. Ah, oh, thanks, Missy. There were so many images fleeting before me, and it was taking me a little bit to get settled down. But when you encourage us to really breathe together with with all of the creation. I felt like I intersected with a, a number of animals mm. who were breathing in a very quiet, still way that sort of was in sync with my own way of breathing. And I was amazed at the stillness in the little creatures. Again, it seemed kind of like a lot of little monkey-like things. Um, sometimes some cats, sometimes some people wearing animal masks. Um, who seem to also be tuning to animals and wanting uh, to unite themselves with animal nature. And I never stopped to think before about when animals are at rest, how they were naturally available to be connected to everything. So it's it's a new thinking for me. It's a new new thinking that I have to get used to. But 
so lovely to, to experience something I hadn't thought before. <laughs> now, who is that behind you? Is that Yoshi? This is Travis, actually. Travis, Travis um, also goes by the, the, his secret name, Azim. He looked like he was smelling the screen. <laughs> he, was, he was, he was, he was, he was touching it with his muzzle. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for sharing the incredible porousness of your beingness. Mm. Travis is falling asleep on me right now, I think. Mm. His head is getting heavier and heavier and resting. I also get a sense that the sun is very impactful today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to say, Sabina, um, per usual, how you always show opposites and they collapse with each other. <laughs> so the changelessness, just how you said that, I don't even know, the loom, I loved that. The loom of, and it could be perception and all of that, but how one dissolves the other and like even the ground and the groundlessness. And that really does uh, cycle one in to just the photons uh, when, you, when you track it. So thank you. Oh, your words, your voice, your perception, your expression. I feel like I'm talking with a plant. <laughs> oh my gosh how beautiful mm, thank you <laughs> wow thank you I did have to after those transmissions came through I did have to um, ground a bit and I had no idea what really came through there and I had no idea, you know, it, what, anything really. So it's always such a leap. And then I, I trust, I have this, this faith in our homecoming together with all of nature and how that, the integrity of what we, our intentions, the integrity of our intentions, how they interweave and, that whatever comes through any of us, and when we align in this way, just really natural, it's nature speaking to itself. So I, want, I have such gratitude for you, beautiful human animal beings. Of course, we have gratitude for all of these incredible horse animal beings and birds that we hear and the elements and Mother Gaia. But the gratitude for one another coming together like this, like ancient times in a temple that has no ceiling and no walls, just all I can do is bow, muzzle to the earth, as I often say. So 
So let us continue to interbreathe and to explore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sherry. Sherry said, I so felt the clinging to viewpoints, like that feeling, right? I know. And, and um, I could feel also uh, from that level of clinging, which is moving to fear. How fear is actually the primary vibration underneath so many of the viewpoints. Next week, I will share um, some of the viewpoints of, of nature beings because hawk came forth and trees came forth. And I think the transmissions were two pages long and I had to go back and just let them wind down a bit. But Hawk said, and I will share this with you now, Hawk transmitted, not said, but the frequency of Hawk transmitted. My viewpoint is circumnabulation from on high. So as we review our viewpoints and begin to examine their malleability and untie from identification even with them, may we soar together from them. Fully anchored to the groundless ground of being and trusting that we'll, we'll grow our sea legs in reverse, whatever that means. <laughs> oh, so good to see you all, Binti. It's so good to see you smiling. <laughs> Thank you very much for today. I've got a really bad cold. I could see you coughing. Oh, yeah. But um, the breathing, it was lovely to hear you give a transmission from Hawk because the breathing, the animal um, I breathed with was um, a bird, like mm. a, a bird of prey, an eagle, mm. a big pointy beak, and it was so easy, completely merging, just being breathing as one it was just so lovely and light oh, thank you and I really appreciated um the um the, the bringing putting into words the uh density of identifying um to try and feel because I noticed that in myself again and again the because of the sea legs of the looking for something solid and I will keep a viewpoint simply because it's something to hold ah. you know, it's an anchor and um I get really frustrated with it but um but it was so it was lovely that it was put into the space like that because I thought I'm not alone <laughs> like it's possible yeah so thank you <clears throat> lovely to be here thank you thank you Binti and how fortunate you are to remember so effortlessly that interbreathing unity with the winged one how fortunate yes what more could we ask for you know, what more could we ask for but to remember? And here we are, remembering.
I'm having a little difficulty with my microphone. That's why I'm holding, I'm holding the phone up to my ear. And Basir, I'll have to listen back to what you said. I got some of it, but not all of it. And I always listen back. So I will enjoy that. But then I decided I'll just I'll just put the phone right up to my ear. <laughs> so I'm just going to look around at each of you and feel your presence here in so much gratitude and quite a bit of awe. and deep roots of humility, which the animal beings and nature has redefined for us, humility being porousness. As a matter of fact, an ancient beatitude was translated through the heart of nature, consciousness. Blessed are the poorest, for they shall inherit the earth. So much love to you all, pioneers. Thank you, beloveds, thank you. Be in touch, breath by breath. And thank you, my love, Travis. I love you so. I was just really, I was just really glad <laughs> to hear you say after the transmission, whatever that means. I was really, glad. <laughs> I somehow feel validated. <laughs> Well, I always tell you, it's totally fine if you don't understand like that, in a sense, is the point. Yes. We don't really need to rely so much on that kind of understanding, do we? No, that's right. It just, I, it's, I, I just, it just made me laugh. I know, you I know, I know. I'm, I'm right in your lane, Cherry. <laughs> yes. The lane of love. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all. Thank Love you. you all. Thank you, Sabina. Take care. See you soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bless Love you. you. Mm -hmm.